Listen to me. I want to tell you something. Come closer. Don't be upset. And don't get emotional. Just get near me and pay attention, please. Look, I know that you're scared. I know what you're afraid of. You mistrust your body. Lately, it has been looking more and more foreign. It's been doing strange things. You suspect that it has been keeping something from you. That knowledge of your own death is already programmed inside it somehow. That it's stored in a primitive organ. That in between the crush of blood and digestion, your appendix or spleen sits obliviously still like an overgrown traffic island keeping watch over a terrible secret. You worry that this knowledge will arrive at your very last moment, not as a spiritual revelation accompanied by an overwhelming cascade of sensations, but as a very public and vulgar betrayal. You're afraid of dying alone. But you're even more terrified of dying in public. Look, it's not happening at this very moment. Perhaps not as long as you listen and watch. People don't die in front of their televisions. In the meantime, we could probably do something about it together. I could tell you exactly what to expect. I could explain using precise words and heartbreaking imagery. I could make it feel as far as a famine or as close as a weather report. In the end, you may not even notice the difference. What's the matter? It's not as if you've been handed a verdict of five months to live. Your chance for appeals hasn't run out. No doctor has called you into his office. There are no news of terrorist cells operating inside you. No word of cancerous radicals infiltrating vulnerable spots or sticking in clumps to the back of your throat. Not yet. Maybe you've given up smoking already. That was smart, but it may not have saved you. Maybe you've learned to make an enemy of the sun. To eat unprocessed food. To avoid tall buildings and airplanes. Not to go into water where sharks have been known to attack. Sometimes on the streets you imagine that you've been given a gift of terrible power. That whoever makes eye contact with you, whoever you touch, will somehow be contaminated and die within days of crossing your path. You hold your breath and listen to your heart. Will it slow down? Can you will it to stop? You've tried to gain some insight through exposure to second-hand sources. You take out videotapes. Walk through great yards. Visit accident sites. You stick to your news sources with a passion. Approaching religion. Even though you always make sure to announce your secular views to anyone who would bother to listen. Still, you check out the church programs on Sunday. You can let your hair down when you're home watching television alone. There's a man reaching in front of the camera, but you're more interested in the church audience shots. You love the close-ups, the boredom, the waiting, the generosity of an audience paying and losing attention, the prayers and singing, the best and the worst of belonging, the natural need for community that you always fight hard to suppress. But none of this is breaking news exactly. There's a world of genuine feeling out there. A world of commitment and action. If you could just rise above all the junk you've collected, you're convinced you could lead a more meaningful life. But there's just too much stuff happening all of the time. A prison riot of things that need to be calmed, controlled, contained, and made useful again. 
And so you begin to recycle. You liquidate things. You start by attacking the things you've collected. Separating them into groups. Organizing them by subject and history. And turning them back into raw matter and energy. You recycle magazines, newspapers, receipts, notebooks, plastic containers, credit cards, statements, cardboard boxes, calendars, cans, contact lenses, paper bags, telephone bills, telephone numbers, traffic, tickets, tax returns, personal checks, records and tapes, music, CDs, old winter clothing, cigarette ashes, mirrors, maps, pain killing pills, antidepressant, antibiotics, loose change, unstable chairs, dead skin, hair, underwear, finger nails, buttons, knife plates, jackets, q tips, watches, walk and soft drink bottles, favorite books, and family photographs, gifts from friends, and bygone lovers, passports, letters, keys, hats, plants, postcards, wallets, faxes, glasses, travel mementos, driver's licenses, shoes, toys, birthday cards, homemade movies, household appliances, notes, numbers, opinions, stories, pictures, passions, people, and places. You recycle anything older than a day. Anything that carries a history is dangerous. You want to erode the grip of the past. Anything beyond your control is a threat. Anything you might have described yourself with. Anything that could challenge the present. Anything that might actually say something different about who you might have been and what you've become. And so you watch and you listen. You live and you learn. You read videotapes. You watch documentaries. You filter out information. You use your remote control. You think of your parents. You recycle. You visit accident sites. This is CNN. Listen to me. There's a few more things that you need to hear. Don't talk. Don't move. Don't even react. Actually, don't do anything at all. Just get near me already. You hypocritical opportunist, fake, phony, con artist, sell out, lip serving, limousine, liberal, white chicken, shit, motherfucker. What's the matter? Have I hurt your feelings already? Can't you speak? Can't you say anything? Have you lost your voice all of a sudden? Maybe you never had anything to say to begin with. Has that occurred to you? Well, let me tell you something. You are shallow and weak. You are constantly criticizing everything, but the truth is you have never produced anything of enduring significance. And now you're finding out just how inconsequential your opinions have been all along. You're probably laughing right now, but deep down inside you know it's not funny. Are you even hearing me? Or are you so full of yourself that you imagine you can keep pandering to your multiple insecurities forever? You are so hypocritical, self-absorbed, and pathetic that I wonder sometimes just, just how much it takes to move you. God damn it. You love to complain about me in public, but guess who you run to at the first sign of trouble? God, you make me sick. As a matter of fact, you've become so cynical that it is difficult for you to believe in anything without immediately needing to find its potential for destabilization. Why is anxiety making you do this? Are you so worried about getting old, about seeming young? Being yesterday's news, scrambling to keep up, but always hopelessly out of touch. There is such a wide gulf between your self-perception and actions that not even you can keep the contradiction from collapsing, let alone can you sell it to others. Do not tell me how this is typical of your generation, and definitely don't blame this on your parents. The high moment of irony is now officially over. So why don't you go get a drink or whatever it is that you do when you're trying to convince yourself that you're thinking 